China has had to rethink its development model. It is uh, coming, the aspiration is to become a, you know, a kind of more service sector orientated economy. A, sust a strong sustainable growth is better than a, you know, uh, an unsustainable high growth rate for a few years. Well, I think that um, it's, it, it's going to uh, seek to promote certain kind of industries, uh, particularly high-tech industries and uh, consumer-orientated industries, um, more general business associated with the domestic market. Um, and the, I, the aim will be to raise the, uh, the efficiency of investments and the productivity of labor. I think in all countries in the development process, first you focus on the quantity, produce more, get more people to the cities, etc. And then you need to focus more on the quality issues, you know, the quality of those workers, the, their skill set, uh, the quality of your institutions. So. Uh, it is good to focus on the quality issues. Now, that's how I understand the Chinese structural reform uh, attempts from uh, now on. So China has been a very special case in uh, today from a theoretical and public policy point of view because it has achieved growth levels over more than a decade that no other country in the world has been able to do. But now, the, we're coming to the end of this phase of intense annual growth based on exports. So China, and as the economy slows down, China has had to rethink its development model and seeing how it's going to shift from exports to consumer and services domestically. It's a big challenge. The Great challenge now is that China has had uh, sort of double digit growth for the last 30 years, most of the time, usually about 10%. And so coming down to um, 6.5 or 7% is, is a big challenge. I think it means that China's in a more complex phase of its development and it is uh, becoming, the aspiration is to become, a, you know, a kind of more service sector orientated economy. So I think really it's trying to create a kind of a mixed economy but with much stronger services and higher consumption and the way that you measure that is much more complicated so it's not so easy to just measure it in one figure like GDP, it's really about having a kind of all-round or an holist an holistic model. But I don't buy that argument a lot that, you know, uh, it's because of China that we have currently have problems in the global economy. It's not because of China, it's because of the others, basically, that we have uh, problems. Because if you look at the growth process in China, uh, it is obvious that if uh, the size of your economy is only around a trillion US dollars or less than a trillion US dollars, uh, you grow 10% or, or more, but when your uh, economy size is around, uh, is more than 10 trillion, about around 12 trillion something US dollars, then of course that growth rate uh, decreases uh, a little bit. And it's not that bad, you know. It is something good. It's good to consolidate. It's good for China to consolidate what China has achieved uh, so far. And, and a little bit growth slowed down in this pro in that process is not bad. Uh, it all depends on how you are going to manage this process because slowing down in this case as you are preparing for this more quality enhanced new period if you are, when you are preparing that slowing down means consolidating your ba uh, your your base and getting ready for the new leap, leap basically. So it's not something, uh, it's not something that, of course it is good for the global economy, for China to grow more uh, strongly, but it, that should be a sustainable growth basically. Sustainable in all senses that we are discussing now. 
It has to be sustainable so that economically sustainable. So it has to continue uh, like this. Uh, and it has to be you know, uh, environmentally sustainable. And it has to be socially sustainable also at the same time. So I think in all uh, meanings of the term, a, sust a strong sustainable growth is better than a, you know, uh, an unsustainable high growth rate for a few years. That's uh, how I see that. I think these structural reforms are very important because what we know about China is that China has grown very fast for a very long time. What the world does not know is whether this growth will last, whether it will be sustainable, and whether it will be consistent with uh, the needs of the environment. It's very important for the world because China today is the second most important economy after the US. So if China is able to provide the world with a development model where high growth can be accompanied by sustainability and equity, then countries next in line, like my own country, like India, can learn a lot of good lessons from that and not go through the same uh, cycle of growth, then inequality, then social tension, and then you address it. So we can learn a lot from this particular change in Chinese policy.